it gives me great pleasure to introduce episode 115 of the Sussex by the Sea fan roundtable. Uh, it's been going far too long um, and it will never stop no matter what you do. Um, I've got some wonderful guests this week from uh, Margate, Canvey, Haringey, and Dulwich, uh, and some lovely, beautiful faces from Hastings as well. Um, as we always do with this podcast, whenever anyone new comes on, we ask them how you fell in love with your club um, and that story. Um, so I'll go first to Paul <laughs> Hamilton from that the lovely Dulwich Hamlet. Paul, tell us uh, your uh, love affair with Dulwich, please. I've been going there about. Um, so I'm a. I'm a. Di- di- I divorced myself from Arsenal because um, I used to live in North London and yeah, and lived in lived in South London for the last what nearly twenty years. And uh, I think about ten years ago, Dulwich were doing um, a program to give away cut price tickets to local schools. Um, so I didn't know Hamlet was there at all. It's it's about a mile from my house, but. Um, yeah, I went along with my daughter and um, just fell in love with it. Really, the um, the the singing, the atmosphere of the place. I mean, I can't remember the score or who we played, but um, yeah, I just so ever since then. Was that too many sherbets, Paul? That you couldn't remember the score, or was no, that? No, I just, don't think so. Because that was that was when my kids. There, the yeah, no, no, that was when I was with my kids. So when I used to go with my kids, they're a bit older now, so I don't go with my kids now. They're away mm. from home, but. Um, no, it might have been slightly booze related, but no. Um, <laughs> so for the first few years, first few years, I kind of, I suppose it just, it, it was a bit, it's a bit like an infection. It just kind of first year, I had three or four attendances. The year after it was seven or eight. And, and then yeah. it got up to, um, it got to, we, we got promoted out of the Isthmian up to the National League South, um, which was um, both a brilliant day, but then five years, four years of absolute carnage. But, um, but, um, but yeah, that just cemented it. And then after after COVID, um, had, as COVID was dragging on, I started helping out more around the club and ended up being, I'm now one of the trust board members. So there's 12 of us who run who um, run the Supporters Trust. Um, okay. And we're, we're elected, uh, we own just over 30% of the club. Oh, wow. Um, okay. uh, yeah, nice. Um, so, um, and I'm kind of the in-house graphic designer. I do all the kind of posters and I sometimes design the kit and, what have you do all kinds of creative stuff oh. that's my day job so um do all, so so it's um it's become a bit like a workplace um but, but one that doesn't pay particularly well but <laughs> yeah. the labor of love yeah yeah, yeah that, i think that's a that, that's a common theme in that, in non-league football isn't it yeah. um yeah so yeah so that, that yeah that's me so yeah i'm yeah i've got a meeting a club meeting tomorrow um i'm i'm going through a period of not going to all the matches because I just got to the point where I felt like I'd seen too much this season. I wanted to, <laughs> um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going, I'm not going to Potter's Bar on Saturday, but I am going up and I didn't come to Hastings last week. Oh, sorry. I missed, you missed the good. No, sorry. it's fine. Um, you don't need to say sorry. Yes. Uh, well, no, no, no. Good, I, I always feel bad voice. when I don't, I always feel bad when I don't go to away matches because it's the, there's part of, even if I've decided I'm definitely not going, part of my brain's going, go on, you could go, yeah. go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't blame get, anybody. Get that yeah, wouldn't, yeah. Anyway, so that's my... sorry, Ian. Wouldn't blame anybody for not going to Potter's Bar, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mind you, their burgers are pretty good. That was what I was going to put in. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I cannot what? remember their burgers. Tell me about the burgers. Oh, uh, yeah, they, they are pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all done like on a big hot plate straight off. And they're, they're like, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, they set up this like outdoor fan area, so near where their bar yeah. is, which has got this big sort of grill on there now. So, yeah, they were one of the better ones I had this year, but um, the rest of the grounds, as I say, leaves a, uh, if you leave the imagination to it, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, Paul, you done there? Done it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing tons of stuff. I just say lots of people have had on before. I do loads of volunteering stuff, but when I ref- sort of we bring Andy Q in and people like that who, who does the uh, PA box and uh, the match day um, after match uh, interviews and things like that. Everyone kind of right. chips in. It's that's why we love it. Not and, least. and yourself, mate. Uh, no, I don't do anything. No, no, uh, no. Anyway. You're a bastard, but apart from that. Shush, shush. <laughs> but we've also got now we've got Lee Parnell, who's a <laughs> serial blogger. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah tried to be. <laughs> Started um, it anyway. It's cool. Um, it's cool, mate. It's cool. Uh, Lee's <laughs> Hast- Lee Pond, I was a Hastings fan, but um, this is his first time on the uh, the round table, and uh, he's also started his own little vlog. Uh, he's managed to miss any drunken behaviour from anyone uh, in particular, 
which I, yeah, so far, but I, he'll I, be on I this praise thing. him for. But um, <laughs> B, tell me how you fell in love with Hastings, mate. Yeah, so um, uh, really much, you know, much the same really as uh, as um, previous gentleman said. Paul, really, Paul. I was watching Paul. Yeah, was much the same as what Paul said. I was sort of divorcing myself. I like that expression, divorcing myself from Premier League football. Really, um, watch Premier League football pretty much my whole life. Uh, big England fan. Um, watching, you know, really, really passionate about watching England. Um, that's really sort of the, where my real love of football is still. Um, and watching Premier League, but slowly getting more and more sort of away from it. Um, and one August, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine said, should we go, should we go and see, see Hastings? I've never been up. I've lived in Hastings all my life. It's a bit of a, um, really not good enough, really. I should have been up years ago. But um, being a big football fan, big football family. Um, so went up there, really enjoyed it. And I said to him, this is going to start something for me. I said, this is re- I really enjoyed it. So went on my own a few times, sort of got slowly got closer and closer to getting to know the rest of the fans. And uh, well, now I mean, last last 12 months, I've done 50 odd games you know, home and away. So uh, yeah, it sort of really changed, changed my whole pers- perspective on football as a whole, really. Um, so I've been taking my son, my son's 19. Jack, he's uh, been coming with me when he's not, when he's back in Hastings, he's not a uni. Um, yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. I've had a, I've had a great couple of years watching Hastings and learned a lot about non-league football that I just didn't know was sitting there an untapped football resource, really, to be completely well, honest. So, I must say, yeah. Lee, talking about perspectives, uh, we do have the images of you in different perspectives. Yeah, yeah, we don't lying on, your, <laughs> lying on your Lying on the floor in a train station with a cone on your head. Those yeah. sort of perspectives, um, we've seen those yeah. ones. We we certainly have, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's been great fun, though. To be honest with you, it's been. I've not been the most social person for years, you know. But it's just this has just ignited something completely different in me. Just you know, getting to know the guys. Everyone's so friendly. Just well, everyone who I've met in Hastings is so friendly. We've been to some away games where maybe not everybody has, is as friendly, but that's fine. That's the way it is sometimes. But um, yeah, I've had a great time. Um, and I've, like Chris said, I've just started doing a. I realised that last year I went to 50 odd games, including England games, and sort of decided that I'd like to sort of record them to sort of look back on. And originally it was just for me to do, but recently I've started sort of putting them on YouTube and yeah, it's just a bit of fun. And once you get to a point in your life where you don't really mind whether people think you're being stupid, you just sort of get on with it really, don't you? So Went yeah. past that moment years ago, I did. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what, what um, in terms of, are you going to be doing it for the England games as well? Yes, that's the idea. So yeah. my son and I go into the Euros. Um, oh, we've got the we've got all three group game tickets. So we're off harder BW camper, and we're going off a bit of an adventure around Germany for two weeks. Awesome. Um, and we're going to keep yeah, we're going to keep in a, Lederhosen. A, 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 <laughs> a, yeah, absolutely, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. sausage by um, the gonna, yeah, right. That's Sorry. it, mate. Um, right. We're going to keep um, going to keep a video log of it all. And I thought, well. If I'm going to do that, I might as well see what I can do. And this has really started something with Hastings as well. So I'm going to try and record home and away. Yeah, just something a bit different, really, I think. Sounds so brilliant. if you all want to subscribe, I'd most, much appreciate it. <laughs> well, but, well I'll, stick a, I'll stick a link on this when it all goes yeah. out and all that stuff. stuff. Really. But no, um, thanks, Chris, for the invitation to be on tonight, really, to be on, be on this. You're very welcome, sir. Right, so who shall we go for, to first? Shall we Terry or John? Shall we go for Terry, let's yeah. talk Margate. Our, our little relegation zone battle, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk Margate. Come on, dear. So we are just I'm good. To, my my kids have uh, destroyed all my notes, so I'm just going to have a quick look. So we have we've had a couple of games. You unfortunately lost to Whitehawk. Which, yeah. Tell me about the Whitehawk because that was three two on the Saturday. Yeah, we fought seven. it back. We was uh, two 0 down. Brought it back to two two all, and then is it ninety eighth minute know. or something? 90 whatever as usual yeah uh harry uh, the keeper it came off of him when it went in but it was basically it was going in anyway it just bounced off of him when the striker put it in i can't remember who, who, who their striker was but that's part of the course yeah um yeah we've, we've got some improvements so uh, we've got a few new players in now uh we had Concord at home. Still can't bloody score. <laughs> but at least we didn't concede in the 98th minute again. <laughs> they had a couple of sending offs, didn't they? Yeah, one of them was from off the bench. Oh, really? What did they do? Yeah. How long did he last? Yeah, it was just like, really? Okay. How long did he last on the, on, on the field? Uh, He'd been subbed off. Oh, right. 
Yeah, oh, it is. So he was off. Yeah, he's he, he been subbed uh, off, so he, he was on the back. I think it was the captain. Oh, oh. And okay. he was giving it this to the referee. <laughs> <laughs> so what? He was given a red card on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we said, uh, yeah, one, of, one, one of their players, um, Deslandis, played for us. He got sent off, and then I think the protests from the bench. Right. They ended up sending him off as well. So oh, I think, I think only... love that sort of thing, don't they? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it was only like that seventieth minute. So, right. But yeah, it was quite entertaining. Yeah. Oh, he threw himself on the floor yeah. when uh, Tyrone was saying hello to him as well. <laughs> <laughs> Took his time. Honestly, it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. But well, I was like, we didn't lose. So we're improving, <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah, so you, you, yeah, and you've had a game called off, haven't you? I'm sure you yeah, had a... Yeah, it was uh, uh, Chester. Last night, wasn't it? Yeah, I was due to drive the minibus up there. God. You, booked, you booked time off work as well, haven't you? Yeah, I had today off as well to recover from driving oh. the minibus up there. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Yes, Dreaded Dreaded it gave me a day off, didn't it? Was it called off early enough for you to, to not go? Just about, yeah, because we would, we was planning to leave around four o'clock, so it wasn't too bad. But, uh, yeah, it was like I was dressed and ready and psyched up to go. <laughs> like, oh, I think yeah. the... Uh... They've got an artificial pitch, haven't they? What are they calling that off? No, they're frozen. Uh, grass. Isn't... grass. Yeah, mm-hmm. frozen pitch. Okay. Right. I know, um, didn't um, Concord um, call their game off at half six? Yeah, they did. The... the, 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 the match referee turned up, didn't they? So Yeah, it's after the crow for a long day about it. Um, I think they had a few Paul Church fans in their DMs winding them up because that's been a, a game that's <laughs> constantly been pushed back a lot of <laughs> and everyone's saying, Oh yeah, it's gonna happen again, it's gonna happen again and I think their social media admin on there was sitting there going, Oh we've got the berries this time, we think it's all good, ready to go. Ref turns up, curtains. <laughs> so cue the uh, the slang up again, that was quite that was quite entertaining last time. <laughs> I can imagine. I felt sorry for him. I thought, oh, here he comes. The um, yeah. So Terry, so you got you got Bogner at home. You, I mean, you're looking at you, the, you know, you're four points clear, aren't you, at the moment? Yeah, but, I haven't been able to bring myself to look at the table. To be fair. <laughs> it's, I mean, it doesn't look great. I'll be honest, yeah, no. don't look great at the table. But uh, you know, Concord and Kingstonian, they do look like they're. I mean, even though Concord have got a ton of games in hand, it's points you want, but like particularly Kinstonian look dead and buried. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say we've we've brought a couple of new players in and they're looking quite good. Mm. I'm looking I'm I'm feeling a bit more hopeful now. We just gotta get Yeah, well we're gonna find out what Haringey's gonna do in a minute. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Terry. They have a little bit of an up they've had a little bit of an upsurge of form, in my opinion. But like um I'm that maybe that's wrong. Um well, let's, let's move on to, to Ian. Ian, so, uh, Haringey, talk to me, sir. Talk to me. What, what's... It's so, like, well, I, mean, since people... I think last time I was here, we'd just beaten Billericay and the mood was quite kind of positive. And then we followed that up by um, losing, but a decent-ish performance against mm. Hashtag on Boxing Day. Yeah. And then we took the lead, threw away the lead, standard. And then yeah. we were dreadful against Carl Shulton on... Um, on the 30th um that was like one of the worst performances i've ever seen any football team just absolutely <laughs> god awful um and yeah then, um, i mean six. i think it's the, the only the only time the only time i've seen i've seen Haringey fans sort of start to get start to get angry at players um we're a patient bunch but that was yeah. that was really really bad and then um followed that up by beating can beating canvey island yeah so at the moment we've sort of that was a good performance, actually. Like, really, I mean, we went behind early and then scored two very late goals, but we were we were probably the better team over the 90th minute, 90 minutes, and that's the first win that we've had in the league at home all season. So that's like that's we've hit a milestone there. We yeah. haven't um, gone without winning at home all season, yeah. Um, and and yeah. So, but the problem with that game was um, three players, three attacking players for us: Matt Young, um, Nadem, Melvin Lambert, and um, well, to Figueroa, all did their hamstring in the same game. So we oh, with Jesus. Enfield, and we, we played quite well against Enfield, but mm. we had absolutely nothing up top. We had uh, we had Tony Mendy, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he's played for most of your clubs at some point or other. But he's not, you know, I quite like him when he's. But you need somebody else to actually do some running around because he won't. Yeah. And uh, it was it was so static up front, and there was just no no one willing to move at all against Enfield. And uh, we played all right, and then conceded quite a soft late goal for it. But, um, but you know, Enfield Enfield are a decent side, um, and so I was you know I wasn't I wasn't too up- upset about that. But 
we really need some attacking players to come back to fitness. I don't know. Sorry, my daughter's harassing me. <laughs> Just sing Sorry. amongst yourselves. Sorry. <laughs> she looking for Kingstonian's form. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Stop it. So why, why, why do you think you were so? Why do you think they were so bad against hashtag then? We weren't. We weren't too bad about, uh, against hashtag, but against Carl Shorten, I don't. I don't know. Oh, um, Carl I assume that, yeah. I assume that we'd spent four days just oh. eating stuff, stuffing ourselves yeah. with Nicky and uh, right. Fair enough. I, I, yeah. I mean, I think as well we are. We are a team that on a good day we might just about beat some of the bottom half of this division and on a bad day we're rubbish and i think it's right. just it's just having a bad day really i yeah. mean to be fair to, yeah. to be fair to Cole Shorten, it was probably one of those days where everything they hit went in as well yeah. um okay like I, I mean they would probably say brilliant performance best i've ever seen them yeah. you're, still, you're, you're no. still getting um half decent no crowds though Ian, aren't you yeah like no still way. still plenty turning up we had um 400 yeah, 470 against canby island which yeah. is which is pretty good, and and that's without all the all the Dutch darts fans who come down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who you got Saturday? You got oh, you got Folkestone. Folkestone. Uh, that's a winnable game. Go and smash them. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's turning it around a little bit there, so that, I think that's uh, going to not be as easy as you might think. But no, no. And he's, he's just got another before. couple of new players in, hasn't he? So. Yeah. The issue for us is we are actually picking up points now, but we're not picking up points fast enough. Like if we if we were maintaining this form over the course of the season, we'd be fine. But because we had such a rubbish start to the season, we've got so much ground to make up, and we're just not making up fast enough. So it's sort of we're doing we're doing okay at the moment, but uh, we 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 really need to be sticking a few wins together if we, we want to have a chance of staying up. I'm beating at home in 2024. That's where we've got to look at. It. <laughs> oh, look at. That. Looking at the positives. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, right. Let's go. Let's get to go to John for Canby. Let's talk Canby Island. John, what are we saying? Uh, yeah, I mean, this would be an interesting one because obviously the first game I've got to pick up on is Haringey. So <laughs> it's like joy and pain as the uh, song went. When it's sunshine and rain, perspective on this. Yeah. Um, to be fair, and what Ian was saying, yeah, they were probably the better side on the day when we played that one. I mean, um, we seemed to start all right, took the lead early, and I know we hit the post in the first half as well, so if some butts, but I never thought we was really in control of the game much. Um, uh, they seem to be doing a lot more, particularly going forwards in the attack. And, uh, yeah, obviously it all just kind of turned on to two late goals in the end. I mean, we had a couple of chances before that. Um, I know one of our players went through like one-on-one, and we pretty much had a point where we had no striker, so seeing it's... <laughs> A central defensive midfielder in a a one on one, um, you know, it was always been a bit of a gamble. But yeah, yeah, if we maybe took those, might have won it. But obviously, um, gave away a bit of a sloppy equaliser, and then they scored a, a good goal. To be fair, a uh, very good strike to win it, and held on for the point. So uh, I'm, I'm glad we made someone happy at the least. But yeah, we were <laughs> fine to that one. <laughs> uh, funny enough, I know the goalkeeping coach over Herringay, Phil. Um, we used to work together at Asda of all places in Badminton, so. <laughs> Yeah, it was what a nice, small world it is. That was a one positive of the day, but yeah. Um, so obviously, yeah. Then we had, um, I think we were meant to have Lewis that got called off more post moment bingo. Um, and yeah, Kingstonian um, on Saturday. Um, I think if you were you were probably watching that as a neutral, it was quite an entertaining game for us. We were just bricking it because we're thinking, oh, for God's sake, not <laughs> don't lose to another side in the, in the sort of bottom four or five because mm. we're going to get dragged into it if this carries on. I mean, the only consistent we've had in our season, it seems at the moment, is just getting more players, players in. Here. I mean, we are so lacking in bodies at the moment. We had our assistant manager on the bench, Kingstonian, the game, and he retired about three years ago. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's the, yeah. the bodies. I mean, he used to be a good player. When he did yeah, play, but... but obviously, racked by injuries and that, ironically. Um, so he called it a day when coaching. But to be fair, a better performance against Kingstonian. I mean, they. Made it hard for us, um, sort of brought us down to their kind of level a few times. But I thought we played some good football. Um, got away with it a little bit at the end. Our goalkeeper pulled off some really good saves. Um, he's kind of had a bit of an up and down season. So it was good to see him get a good performance in. Looks like you had a bit of a, super, that a, bit bit of a, super, bit of a super sub moment there, though, wasn't it? That came on uh, two minutes to go. That's that's it exactly yeah I mean like yeah the boy who came on and, and won it for us Luca he's had his um, chances um, cut a few times this season for some reason which is shame because he's a decent little player um, and he again he kind of got away with one as well because obviously he got a penalty 
Um, and the goalkeeper's done well to get down and saved it, but he's just dropped as nice as you like for Luca just tap it in afterwards. So, I mean, we'd had a few chances before that. Like, they, I think their goalkeeper saved a really good free kick off of us. We at the crossbar. So, we definitely weren't second best in the game by any shot, by any stretch. I think we deserve to win it. So, it's just, yeah, going on and seeing if we can try and get some momentum now, really. But with, you know, so many injuries in the squad as well, it's that's going to be a challenge. Well, you know, you've got a couple of home games coming up, haven't you? You've got, who have you got? We have, yeah. Um, obviously, Horsham on uh, Saturday. So, you know, that'd be another big one. Hopefully, the, uh, the ice don't don't put a pay to that. Um, next week, I think we were meant to have Folkestone, but this whole County Cup situation is throwing that up in the air a little bit now because, obviously, they tried playing it on Tuesday. That didn't happen. Wanted to do it today. Again, still frozen. So, it might be a case of the FA end up shifting the Folkestone game now. Um, so, if that... Might, that might get knocked back into February. And I think after that, it don't get any easier because I think we've got Chatham away after that. So that's that's not going to be a, an easy one at any, any stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, not sure. Yeah, yeah. No, you said it, John. Um, yeah. So, I mean, to be fair, we have done it once already this season. So, yeah, anything's possible, you know. This league is just a, a merry-go-round at times. You just, they never know where it's going to stop. No, certainly is, certainly is. Um, well, let's move on to, to Paul. Paul, let's talk Dulwich. Uh, let's talk your last few games. Obviously, the Hastings game you weren't at, but what, what was there any games that you made? Um... So, I mean, the Hastings game is, even though I wasn't there, follows our form. We're just getting loads of draws at the moment, lots of draws and wins. We've become, we had a pretty shocking start to the season because um, we had an entire, apart from, we replaced our squad apart from three players. So we started entirely virtually new. Um, and then on, and with a manager we'd only had for the last couple of months at the end of last season, mm. um, who was hired after Mr. Paul Barnes departed. Oh, what what uh, an inspirational manager he was. He was. We found him so inspirational, <laughs> we sacked him. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, we, sadly, we took a bit too long to do that, so that kind mm. of screwed up our season last year. Mm. Um, I, did, I went to the 6-0 away at Worthing, which was at least oh, satisfying because it was so cruelly unpleasant. That after after that, anyone else complaining about losses just didn't matter. It was like, no, you didn't see. <laughs> it was just like the end of days. And yeah. also, I just got a new second new second hand car, so I thought, oh, I'll go for a bit of drive, go down the south coast, go for the evening. Got there late. We'd already conceded, you know. And then and then yeah. Anyway, this season, um, yeah. So the, the beginning of the season, we had a new squad, and then a, um a lot of a lot of injuries to key players. Like, you know, just a glut of them. And, you know, every team has it, but we had it a lot. So that took us a long time to settle down. And But since kind of November, we've become quite hard to beat. Um, we seem to have a defence which resembles a sieve at times. <laughs> you sieve you're with... right now, you got Harrison. Yes, you're. we got him from you. He's great. Yeah. yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. Right. yeah. Is it is he is he a Londoner? Is that why he did he did it? No. Right. I, I think you have possibly got where we are in Thanet, it is just the arse end of England. No <laughs> to come here. <laughs> right, fair dues. And be, so okay. being in being in South East London does mean we do it. Yeah, a, he's a he's he's a top lad. We've had he, he did hundred hundred appearances for us and then bugged yeah. off to you lot. <laughs> yeah. And we yeah, I'm sorry about that. I didn't cause that, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so yeah, the the so because of the injuries, there were, we've been through quite a lot of players this year, and an awful lot of the ones that came in. Some of them were like getting injured the next week. It was just like comedy, you know, disaster time. So so, but we've got now we've got um, Hakan um, in charge with his able assistant Terry. Um, they they seem like a very they they the players are fitter and they. They've got a very clear idea of what they're doing on the pitch, but just our defending lets us down at times. And um, so we've been through so many games where you look like you're going to win and then don't, but we haven't been losing them either. So sort of mid table at the moment is kind of completely fair. I can see us kind of gradually edging north of that, but um, I'm not massively into going back to the national league South anytime soon. <laughs> it was a pretty, pretty unpleasant experience last time. 
but um you need a healing yeah. period there's a healing period yeah there's a healing period yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also lots of the, lots of the teams in that league are a bit um far away for a start i mean it's become the southwest league this year there's there's about mm -hmm. six teams like west of bath um but also the, the just the the um the atmosphere around the clubs is a little bit more uptight than at the Ismian level. I think clubs at this level are genuinely friendlier. Um, and almost everyone I know has kind of re remarked on that just because people are a little bit more relaxed because they know, well, we're, we're kind of down here and it's, we're used to being down here. Mm. Whereas once you start moving up into the national South and then there's the idea that you might go to the national itself mm. and it feels like you're on, you're almost on a ladder. Yeah. Whereas yeah. at the Ismian, yeah. is kind of, there's a nice distance to it. Some of the some of the Hastings, myself and some of the other Hastings guys would discuss it how we how we would get to some of the games and and how that would work if we were to go up that'd be a bit of a bit more of a challenge I would say we yes. were discussing that Chris weren't we Yes we were um, well we usually pile in your car don't we uh, Lee so uh, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. usually how we solve it but it does so help I just started working on the trains so not saying that I've got a free pass or anything but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> me 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 um yeah so so sorry i mean in in, in, term, in terms of in terms of you know it, it's helped that we kind of that we went out of all the cups but virtually as quick as possible um and then and then yeah and then a few players what with all of that what with having so many new players come in it took quite a few of them time to settle down and actually start seeing who they were um there's a guy called um riley plays in midfield he's fantastic he scored a load of scored four or five goals this season but yeah just like a surging midfielder and then we've got Michael Chambers who used to be a Billerick I think he's played for half the clubs in this league he used to play at Billericay as well he's um but he's a bit he's a defender who sometimes scores yes he did he scored, he scored against, against us, against us. <laughs> the but he, <laughs> he's a bit of a coin flip though because like he'll he'll have games where he looks amazing Right. And it's almost like the beginning. You should flip a coin and say, which version are you going to get today? Are you going to get the one who lets the ball sail over his head? Or, or, or are you going to get the one that charges up the other end of the field and scores goals and defends everything? It's um, he's, he's, he's entertaining. I'll give him that. But yeah, so we're, we're I think uh, the atmosphere and also our attendances keep being quite ridiculous. So um, which is making. The people... Well, I was going to ask you that. Well, I mean, what is the what is the magic formula to. I mean, that you guys, I'm sure, I'm sure the the, the Hastings people would agree. There was at least three, four hundred um, Dulwich at the Hastings game. Easy, which is, Easy. is yeah. particularly in terms of away support, is is very, very good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. your home, your home, you're like three thousand, four. Well, our, 3, our capacity is three three thousand three hundred and something, mm. and we're getting three, three five. Yeah, yeah, and we're getting we get most Saturdays are there or thereabouts um nowadays and even tuesdays are like well over a thousand um the, um and yeah of course the away support i mean the i think the away support for hastings is, is really good because when that fixture came out like we were looking for you know we're looking for margate hastings uh white hawk maybe places that are a lovely place to visit you know and have good a good pubs day out. good white pubs good, yeah. good pubs exactly you know white hawk a lovely place to visit mm, well <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm not sure about that but if you live in south london it's a trip to brighton yeah i've been to <laughs> dulwich that's quite nice you might as well just stay in brighton though just just ignore yeah. the white hawk bit yeah <laughs> yeah 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 that, that's cool just having a day out in <laughs> but um now you guys made a lot of noise on saturday just yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're, about they're, they're, saying you didn't you did yeah no no we're, they're, we're, well we make a lot of noise at home um i mean this the it, it was what 10 years or so ago when i first first started again the, the saturdays were you know about 500 ish maybe to uh, creeping up to a thousand um i think it's the, the the almost the the magic reason for it is that is geographic geography is where we are i mean we're right in the middle of south london um millwall is what two miles one way and none of us would go there anyway <laughs> um what was that, what was that? <laughs> well, and, and, well and also all our crowd wouldn't go there anyway and mm. then and then palace is another four or five miles the other way but we're in south london where there are literally thousands of people who want to go and watch football matches so mm. you know and and so and, and we've kept our prices um prices low for a long time deliberately um um so it, it's it, it and it's for it's just it's it's just good fortune where we are we know i think we, we're very aware that we're we're quite we're very lucky to get such huge attendances it is quite i have to add it's quite hard work because it means that because we're 
we don't have anyone tipping money into the club from above. Mm. So basically, the money we make at matches gets spent on running the team. And but also, if you have attendances of three thousand, then you need lots of security and you need lots of bar staff. And you know, so the expenses. You, yeah, there's more money, but the expenses go up as well. Yeah, yeah. So 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 it's um. And yeah, and the number of volunteers you need, and you know, it's so it it's quite a lot of graft to keep it, it keep it running. But um, so there isn't the I suppose we got to that point of having quite some such good attendances because we had programs for like the thing that brought me to the club first. You know, the kind of giving away tickets to schools, um, all the stuff we've done about around refugees, around um, around LGBT rights, all that kind of stuff. It mm. just we've created an atmosphere around the club that's very welcoming and hopefully quite fun and um you know it and on top of that we live near thousands of people who want to go and watch football <laughs> yeah i think that's the, the main thing but yeah no it's it's good to be a welcoming club um you know uh yeah, yeah the magic the magic seeds hopefully they can um be thrown only, across hastings but yeah the, go only on, time, the only time it's got that it's gone a bit weird was last year when um Chessant visited <laughs> All right, <go> on. <laughs> and um so, you know the normally you switch ends Right. Uh, uh, so uh, before the match, we were we were before the match. We all of our lot, the rabble were at one end, and then we had to switch for the first half because okay. So we went to the other end, and the Chestnut lot just stayed there, right? <laughs> and there was I don't know maybe a hardcore about thirty or forty who wanted to have a fight, <laughs> like they were really yeah. on. And um, yeah, well, yeah, just you know, the kind of moody teenagers mixed with several, oh, yeah. with several yeah, we had that um, last year. Several Larry yeah. geezers are like, egging them on, and it was um, yeah. it was quite good. But then that then it turned out that we paid for good security, so it didn't come to anything. But um, <laughs> and also they were was it they were calling us or called all kinds of scuffing, including lefty scum. And then we we were singing to them <laughs> when we scored one nil to the lefty scum, but singing, <laughs> but singing, singing it right, singing it right out. Fantastic! <laughs> Always helps if you win. It, it does it when, yeah. when you're in that situation. Yeah, yeah. That's the way to deal with that sort of thing. Well, I, I've got one more. I know we don't want to make this all about Dulwich, but I have to mention the Dulwich Lewis feud. Um, you know the sort of Twitter feud. <laughs> oh, I can't yeah. not talk about it. With the um the AI, AI, dog. AI dog and all that. Well, <laughs> the, the, the half of it I forgot to be honest. But like, what's your thoughts on it, Paul? Come on, come on, slag Lewis off. Come I, on, Paul. I come on. Pay, come I on. only paid attention to the beginning of this, where someone was writing just a load of rub, just a load of crap about um uh, just about who um how we're basically sort of plastic and not real and or just kind of like and um. And just starting this argument online. And uh, to be honest, whenever it was Lewis I... Clamour, Lewis Clamour was the one that started it. Not saying any names, right? But <laughs> claiming, to be, claiming you're right, and so director at Lewis. Just uh, anyway, go on, carry on. Okay, right. And then when they when they came to yeah, our place, they, when been. they came to they came to our place in the cup, and they were singing, "Was it you're just a bus stop in London or whatever?" And it's just like, have you seen how many fucking fans we've got here? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, what? Well, yeah, anyway, but um. At the point that that tiff broke out, that's normally when I switch off from such things. I don't have much. I can't be asked with people slagging each other off online. Um, well, that's all that happens online. I thought it was symbiotic. I felt there was a <laughs> Dulwich and Lewis. They just they are. Oh, it was. No, I thought. I thought it was a before, beautiful thing before that match. So, like in the when we were in the National League South, we used to play Bath every year. Mm. And, that, and that was that was called the middle class derby. I was going to say, yeah, because, right, because it's just so <laughs> obvious, it? or, or the Waitrose yeah. derby. It's just so yeah. <laughs> just everyone, <laughs> everyone just meets That's up and tells them, they, everyone just meets up and tells each other how how lovely they are and what they've mm. eaten on the way there and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And I thought that that would be kind of the same with Lewis and so, the people who run the club that I met. There's, um, there's some lovely people, but yeah, there's. Uh, uh, an undertow of moodiness, which I wasn't expecting. It's wannabeism. That's what it is. It's a wannabe wannabeism what, right? going on. What, what do they want to be? I think I don't know. They just they don't like you being around. I just it's that yeah, you're it's invading their then. safe space. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because like, the original sort of preset for that sort of thing is back. Because when I was getting into Eastern football, Dulwich were always kind of that archetype club of that sort of could bring in the big crowds and obviously quite welcoming, opening. And then when I went to Lewis last season, I thought myself, they should try and be like that much. So yeah. it's going on the case of they've, they've, met, they've met the uh, the master. And uh, yeah, that yeah, one. The master met the pupil. 
That's it, exactly. Right. Not it's June, is it? That's I it. Thought about like that, but it must be quite annoying for them. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we need to remind them of it. They, I do. I do remember they were they were slagging you you lot off, and then I think one of your fans reminded them that they've got they haven't got TPs in their ground. What is it they've got in their ground? They've got um beach charts, beach charts, beach charts inside the gut in their ground. So it's like we were talking about middle class. It's like, come on, you know, yeah. don't throw stones, you know. But yeah. anyway, let's talk about Hastings now. Right, I've got Andy, I've got uh, Ian, and I've got Johnny Gale, and obviously Lee here. I want to speak to I want to speak to Andy first. First of all, Andy, great mm. post match post match interviews. Yes. By the way, yes, you've been waiting quietly. This is very weird for Andy. Andy usually uh, mega mouth. Um, post match. Well, yeah, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have much of a working knowledge of the of the intricacies of the um, situation at Harringay and Camby. Obviously, I've seen the um, seen the Lewis. Dulwich, bald men fighting over a comb type sort of <laughs> spat. But uh, yeah, I, I I I sort of share share Paul's opinion really that six people having a go at each other on Twitter is oh, not really on. representative of anything that's going on in real life. Give it so. some air, Andy. Yes, we know it is only six people <laughs> online, but come on. Yeah. The, the purpose not, of banter. You know, just... So what? Sorry, what was the? Sorry to cut back in. What was? What? What was the? the, the the beef what was the problem there wasn't it? really a bit they were just i think one what it is is as i remember and i'll stop talking about this after this uh <laughs> the lewis the lewis whoever does the lewis reports afterwards is genuinely funny a person that does really kind of kind of funny even when they get hammered funny reports on the game and then mentioned about your middle class you know the usual sort of as i remember and then that started the was, re- to put it bluntly paul it was a very clever it was a clever dick article about the types of people oh. who go to watch dub- Oh, to put it bluntly, yeah, and all these um, AI generated images as well of like kind of uh, hits yeah. as well. Yeah. So it was essentially just one big craft beer festival with a football match in the background. So and, and then and then Dulwich came back. To be fair, it's not all it's not all Lewis. Poor Lewis. Now let's feel sorry for them. And um and then it started from there, and then it never stopped. So there was always someone, either Dulwich or Lewis, and there was other clubs beginning to chip in. And what was which was quite funny, which was. They would then tease either Dulwich or Lewis, and then it would start back up again, which right. it went on for weeks. It was be- it wasn't horrible. It was no one saying anything actually nasty to each other. That but um, <laughs> I, I was, I was well. I, people that know me know I was well entertained by it, and I didn't in any way try and stoke anything. I just like to say that. <laughs> sorry, no, you'd and, never do that, Chris. I wouldn't, Ian. <laughs> Andy, sorry, back to you, sir. Mm. So post match interviews going well. Um, excellent stuff. <laughs> um, mm. taking our club to a, a, a higher level basically in terms of um, getting information and and content out there so praise you I know it's a hard job I know what you have to go through to get that done and I'll leave that there but um, how are you finding it and um, then we'll start talking about football yeah it's interesting obviously um, you know all kinds of clubs have um, different levels of development in their media situation ours was pretty ropey at the beginning of the year to be fair um and it all just you know it it all just stemmed from me making a little bit more effort with the PA side of things and making a little bit more effort from the with the music and you know trying to develop a little bit of an atmosphere and create the PA box twitter account and and luckily somebody somebody had the bright idea of develop they wanted to develop the interview so they asked me to do it and I just sort of um I'm a little bit of a control freak so no. <laughs> once someone puts that out there I'm gonna it's either yeah I'm I'm sort of gonna do it 100 percent or nothing yeah 100 percent well yeah that's right so I think if you say it's one of those things if you say you're gonna do something then you do it so I did that with the PA As George box, Michael and... said if you're gonna do it do yeah. it right now do it right do, do it with me and that and that is that is it, and it's t- and it tortures you sometimes because when things go slightly wrong, um, it ruins your day. But uh, uh, but it, we're we're working on it, and it's um, gradually coming together. And getting a good cooperation from Chris is absolutely brilliant. I can't thank him enough. Um, this is our manager, Chris Agatha. I can't thank him enough for his cooperation and his attitude towards it. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, the players are really good as well, so they're they're you know such great blokes to be around. And we don't we don't do much. We're we're developing the player stuff again because it's early days. So it was fantastic to get Tom up into the PA box on Saturday yeah, after the match. Uh, 
I, I watched okay. that one. It was re- really good. Really good interview. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, talking so, to Tom. So talk, hang on. Uh, Andy, Andy, talking to Tom. I tried to yeah. get in, interview him last week. Obviously, you mm. got his interview. You got his interview then, right? I've been trying to interview him this week. I was supposed to interview him a couple of hours ago. And he's just not talking to me now. You're not paying enough, mate. <laughs> so this is what's changing hands, isn't it? Changing hands. I know what you like, Andy. Sorry, Jack. I'll, I'll, I'll get him on, what, get him on, get him on my blog. Is, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we have a fairly informal Chris. Again, the brilliant thing is that Chris has encouraged them to get involved. And so uh, so when we ask them, what I don't do is I don't, I make a point of not badgering them before the game for example i don't want i don't want that sort of thing in their head before the game i i make a point of just keeping it as light as possible really with the, with them because they've got I, I know they've got a job to do and i don't i just don't want to be in their way so we deal with it after the match and um and it, it sort of works really so we keep it the one thing we do is we just keep it as light as possible so we just so they can do their job and we then come in afterwards um and you know it's it, it's it's yeah i have no idea why tom is blanking you i can rest rest assured that it's nothing to do no it's I completely to do with you. No, it, i i know what it is i haven't it's signed any exclusive deals with him i know well i don't know what to say to that no it, tom is not blanking me he's, he's obviously just forgotten um i'm not the first number on his phone um yeah well, I, I mean i yeah i i, I don't i don't te- i i again i I don't make it my business to have all the players' numbers because, again, it's just they just don't need me. I, I always think of it, they don't need me hassling them. Um, it's all right with Chris because it's part of his job. But, you know, with the players, it's a, it's an extra for them. So they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart, if you like. And um, so that's how we treat it. We, you know, we have more of a formal arrangement with Chris and the players, we treat it informally. They you know, come to it's, you. It's, they it's, come it's, to it's, you, Andy. Yeah, it's gradually, you know, again, we did the ladies on Saturday, Sunday, and um, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to work with. And Tom, their coach again, is absolutely brilliant and super cooperative. So, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's good. I'm l- probably lucky in that we've got the right people to help us do it. So, you know, so, and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure other people, I don't know what other people are doing around their, around their <laughs> clubs and that, but... It's so dependent on the cooperation of the main protagonists, and we've got that, which really makes life a lot easier. So hopefully by the end of the season, we'll be any good at it. That interview you had with Chris a um, week ago when he did a rundown of all the players and you know who's staying, who's injured and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what we've been after for mm. what, decades, mate, honestly. And uh, <laughs> I'm... Oh, no, I'm not. I've, I've been saying it to a few people, but I'll say it on the end now because some people won't have heard this. You know, nobody has got an excuse when they go on social media to say, well, I don't go on social media, so how am I going to get the updates? Mm. Well, you're on social media. All you've got to do is go on YouTube and listen to you. And you get all the news you want to hear now. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's they are good interviews. They really are good interviews, yeah. Much really. better. It's much yeah. better. Right, yeah, that's yeah, enough inflating Andy's them... uh, ego now. Let's talk Pacers <laughs> United football yeah, club, please. Well, well, anyway, um, anyway, the feedback's been pretty good, and we're <laughs> yeah, we're we're happy. So we just try and make it better. No, it is it is very good. Um, it's invaluable mm-hmm. for any clubs. Uh, how difficult it is to get volunteers to yeah to do it, particularly to do it to the level that Andy's doing it. I'm, I'm really kissing his bum now. Now, but it is actually it is good. It is good. I mean, I'd it's, say it as other fans, I'd watch. Be, it, I'd watch him yeah. talking about a different club than yours. It's that mm-hmm. good. Sorry, Andy, go on, carry on. <laughs> All I was going to say was, it should be obviously. It's a, this is the more bouncy, the more chatty, the more general stuff, and it should be just a, a sort of adjunct to that. So this is this is Junk a separate that, thing. Yeah, you Big word, word of the we. And uh, yeah, so the, the two things like this and the more formal club stuff should work in tandem to <laughs> give everybody exactly what they want, really. It's it's an sure. abs- the Hastings experience. Well, as I say, I'm a fan. I'm not linked with a club. Not Andy is linked with a club, so I'm just a fan. So <laughs> people can come out with anything on here. So it's... you know what you were just, just sorry. You're Go on, this guy over here. <laughs> I'll point at my screen. Um, your friend with the grey hair. The friend with the. Oh, I'm not going to say anyone's got grey hair on here. Um, <laughs> John. Well, John, John, holds, yeah. John was just saying, I've got none but, to be grey. Sorry. So um, we had we had the, we had years of the same of um we had a, we had a fairly uncooperative manager for a very long time. Um, and, well, 
really uncooperative. So so the media, so the idea of doing post-match uh, interviews and then also kind of midweek updates about form and who's in and who's out, but that's only just come to us this year. And it's, it's really important. It was really missing yeah. because, yeah, you right. know, when you turn up on a Saturday and three players missing and you haven't got a clue why, and then if that's fine for one week but if it goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks and you're, you're just in the dark and yeah. you know there might be perfectly good reasons why people aren't on the pitch but if you don't know it makes it as a fan quite annoying isn't it it's quite frustrating but it, it yeah, tend, what tends to happen is it all gets replaced by rumor yeah, exactly and yeah. then and yeah. then the club gets cross about the rumors being spread yeah and then they refuse to talk even more <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, so but, but you had Paul Barnes. He's the he's the main oh, talk. Yeah, he did talk. He did talk. Would you would you like me to avoid the topic of Paul Barnes? Um, I... <laughs> well, let, let's talk. What we uh, let, let, first of all, let's 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 talk our games, please. Right, let's talk. We we let's say we go to Chesson. So we had Chesson on the the sixth. This is from the last podcast because the last one came out on the sixth. So three two win away. Who was at that one? Ah, you were there. Yeah, it was. A, I was there at that one. Yeah. Were you there, Andy, or you you were on holiday then, weren't you? No, I was in Landrotti. Yeah, okay. This is where the club sends these people, Paul, Terry, John, and Ian. That's they get to Lanzarotti, they go. <laughs> the, 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 the funny mid, thing, thing was, mid, I was mid, in um, midwinter break thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was in I was in Lanzarotti, and Chris Agatha was in Tenerife. But and there's a bit this, of a disparity there, this, isn't there? Yeah. I had this dream of getting across, of getting across and doing an interview with him in Tenerife. Oh, but but then so... my, I was, <laughs> can you imagine it? But anyway, I was horrified to find out that it was a. T- I didn't realise how far apart yeah, they are. It was a ten-hour ferry ride, so I had to oh, sack Christ, that Christ. idea off. Well, yeah. Anyway, I've lost me trying to thought that. Right, so Chesson away. You know, so Lee was Lee was going to tell us about Chesson. Yes. yes. Well, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was a. I thought we played really well to be honest with you. I thought we hung on a little bit towards the end, but I thought it was a I thought it was a good game to be honest with you. I thought um Hastings played really well. It's a I haven't I had missed a couple of games before that over the Christmas period due to family family sort of stuff over Christmas, but it was You weren't shuntering uh, about that on the way to the game, were you? No, not in the slightest. No, 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 <laughs> not in the slightest. <laughs> um, but but as well I was pleased to be back seeing the games. Um yeah, so oh, no, I thought it was a I yeah. think that was the one where the gold is allowed right at the end there, wasn't it? But no, it was, that was the other one, wasn't it? But yeah, it was, that was uh, the free all. This one yeah. was uh, two for David and that, uh, yeah, for Tommy David. Fag getting Craig, off the Craig, um, yeah, Craig, yeah. off the mark yeah, there. Getting, that's it, and that's the one where he got quite badly injured, wasn't it? He's done up his back yet, but it was uh, he was injured in that, wasn't he? In the free two. Well, we can ask uh, we can ask Andy. Andy wasn't he out for another couple of weeks? Tommy Fag. Yes. So so Chris said that. Tommy will be out for another couple of weeks, so they're optimistic yeah. for that. Because obviously, yeah, as as well as Lee said there, I mean, he'd he'd really hit his stride, you know, after yeah. a couple of games settling in. It was, I mean, him and David basically scored all the goals over Christmas, didn't they? Yeah, so, I thought he looked key well. and chip key and chipped yeah. in with one, but um, but those two were really beginning to form a bit of an understanding, which was a bit of a shame. But anyway, a couple of weeks, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, so, he, he was. They were sort of linking up really well. I thought up front until he until he got injured. It did, didn't look didn't look good at all. He tried. He looked like he was going to try and carry on at one point, and I thought, oh, he's going to get up and crack on with this. But he, uh, no, he, oh. he obviously went off in the end. So I'm only talking quickly about that one because heavy pitch three two. We were a little bit lucky to be honest. Second half, uh, yeah. Chess had come back into hanging the on game, the end, hanging on. But yeah. let's move on to the uh, Sussex Cup game. Oh, uh, fantastic! Yeah. Eastbourne <laughs> Borough of the National League South, um, who aren't having a great time of it. Tears are rolling down my face about that. Um, yeah. Played them at their place. And we, in true Jose Mourinho style, uh, we shut up shop, got pens. Part, part the bus, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, we, we parked nah. the camper van. <laughs> I don't think it was a yes. bus, but it was no, a camper part van. Of, part the camper Well, it's particularly towards the end of the, se- towards the, end of the second half. Um, yeah, it was absolutely freezing that night. That was so so cold out there. But uh, no, I thought it was a. Uh, it was good to get nil nil at the end. And get them on penalties. Uh, mm. It was a terrible penalty penalty shootout. I don't think anyone really wanted to score it, did they? But yeah. um, Char- Charlie was superb in goal. Uh, yeah, Charlie was, Granger really was, was pulled off some great yeah. saves. Uh, and the main reason yeah, why I want to mention was. this game is because the wonderful Tom Chalmers came back. I just yeah. said some mean words about him earlier, but it was a truly emotional because for for the the guys that don't know who uh, Tom Chalmers is, he's a midfield player that we uh, 
he's been out for a, about a year with a uh, it was a, a knee injury, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, cruciate yeah. ligament. Yeah, cruciate ligament. Yeah, and you know this kid was going places like he was regularly being scouted. You know, once he starts playing again, he'll definitely. If Hastings don't go up the leagues, he's gonna go up. He's, he's gonna a go. top, yeah. top player, and it was a it was devastating when he got injured about a year yeah. ago. And t- when he came back on, singing his name for 10, 15 minutes, it was, it was, you know, and he didn't look too far off what he used to be like, which was was good to see. Someone put him up in the air as well straight away. Um, yeah, and good. he survived that all right, didn't he? Yeah. I did, did notice that when he uh, comes straight on and, and someone's like, it's like a boot in, didn't they? So I was uh, seeing him come through that was quite a, uh, was quite good. It sort of hold your breath a little bit when he went down, but no, it was a, uh, yeah, it was I good to see him come back on. Quite yeah, quite astounding how a coming back on a three G pitch, having done his knee yeah. on a three G pitch, and um, and then just looking so natural. I think that was the biggest thing that struck yeah. me was you can see how good a player he is when they. I think how I said what I said to him was his sense of the game was just still there. It was just his instinct was still there, and that uh, yeah, the I match did wonder if it was will a... come. Did wonder if it was a great opportunity to throw him straight back onto a 3G pitch if he got injured on a 3G pitch. Yeah, yeah. Because there always be that kind of nervousness if he doesn't get if he goes a few games playing on a on a, on a grass and then you know that could potentially creep into your mind whether you're concerned about going back onto a 3G pitch. That so might have been a fantastic mm. time. Well, it is nice because it's jump straight back on it. Yeah, it's nice because it's done now. It's done. So, yeah, done. so the nicest it, thing really. for the nicest thing yeah. for Tom is he is now as of this Saturday. He's just playing football again. All that is now yeah. out of the way. So that's a re- that's really, really nice for any footballer who's been injured long term. He's now at the stage where he's now just playing football again. He's not a returning yeah. player. He's not. There's no deal around it. He's just a player. And that's the nicest yeah. thing about it, I think. Yeah, that was, so, that we, we was a good one at that. We move on from that then. Go on, sorry, go on. Yeah. Go on, dude. Yeah, so dis- disappointing thing. Only The only disappointing thing about watching the, the, the Sussex Cup, Sussex Senior Cup, is a few of the players can't be in it, just they're t- the cup tied, mm. which is a bit sort of frustrating, really. But I mean, I, was like, I know that's the way it is, it's the same for everybody, but just sort of find that a little bit frustrating that uh, this level certain players can't can't play because they're, they're cup tied. But other than that, yeah, no, other than under that, 23s great, great can't play, under 23s have got no league to play in anymore, so yeah, got it a lot seems of really frustrating. Just got no games now, yeah. When it's a you know, it's a young player, maybe played a game for somebody else. And now can't play can't play in that, that competition yeah. at all. So that just seems a bit harsh. I don't know. There's obviously rules behind it. Well, I mean, it to me. we we were. We, I mean, we were so short. Um, sorry, guys. I'm just going to bring this up. We were so short in that game, weren't we? Playing, uh, we were playing 16 year old, weren't we? Yeah, yeah 16 year old. Yeah. Yeah, Joe, yeah. yeah. Was it Joe? I, yeah, I, think, Joe. I think. Well, half of it's half of it's because we were obviously a bit short, but also um, young Joe who played is a player that. Chris has got a lot of confidence in and wanted to give him a game. And he saw that as the almost a God sent opportunity to do it. So, you know, so yeah, and he looked the part, to be honest. He played well. Yeah, yeah, he absolutely. played he yeah. played with a lot of confidence. I mean, for 16, if we, we we all remember what we were doing when we were 16, it's just crazy, really. <laughs> well, yeah, we were clue, weren't we? When we were 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, for him, <laughs> good for him, mate. Good for him. I was still just, coming on doing that. Still doing my paper <laughs> round. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So, kind of only just give, only just giving it up. Well, you say that. So, I mean, obviously, we we played Joe. Um, Joe played with confidence. Eastbourne Borough played with the opposite. They did look like a team that's destined to return to the Isthmian Prem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is uh... really. <laughs> 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 no, because we, they were one of the teams when we were up, upper league that, that just going away there is it's always cold and bleak and yeah. just there was two or three years running we kept drawing them in the cup it was mm. like some weird horrible magnet thing going on <laughs> you know we just kind of like who are we going to get this year oh Eastbourne brilliant you know it's just and it, yeah in yeah but um yeah it was it's just dreadful but yeah it was it's a nasty place to go mm. well. <laughs> That's Paul's words, not mine. Any Eastbourne <laughs> fans listening? Uh, <laughs> All we can say is it, it was cold. It was yeah, cold. Yeah, no freezing. And then obviously we talk about Tom's home debut. So he comes back, gets two against the Dulwich uh, in a game that I thought we should have finished off in the first half. Um, 
we had some chances, but then so did Dulwich. And then we gave some charitable goal. Uh, I think um, Tommy's going to be our leading goal scorer at the back. He's got how many own goals has he got now? He's got three. <laughs> has he got three yeah, now? So. Oh, Tommy Penfold. So he, a, a glorious own goal uh, to get you 2 1 in the game. Right. Um, and then uh, 2 2. To be honest, it was crunch, crunch, crunch the cheeks time because uh, at, at points in that second half, I thought, you're going to get another one. But um, yeah, you did. 2-2, <laughs> two, two, I'll take yeah. that point yeah, after that. Is not. Yeah, you, you, you've, you've fallen into that kind of, there's a there's a weird thing with our games, lots of them end up as draws, but then we tend to have a very good last 15 minutes. And um, there's a guy called Luke Wanadier, number seven. Um, mm, he just yeah. tears up and down the pitch. And, um, you know, and, and they seem to, have, yeah, the, the for the level of fitness that they've got going on is amazing because they, they do keep running and right up to 90 minutes. And, and we have a, quite a few of our wins this season have come by just kind of just sticking with it because lots of teams do fall fall away, lose concentration in the last five minutes. I definitely think if it if it had gone on for another 10 minutes, there was, there was only one winner by that point. Mm. But, yeah. but as Chris said, we should have been well ahead by yeah. half time, really. Mm. Yeah, know, we we did have some chances in the first half. I thought we played. I thought we played pretty well. I thought it was a. I thought it was a cracking game. It was, it was, okay. it was one of those games where you you've got a really really massive crowd in, comparatively speaking, and so often when that happens, it's like it's a really drab nil nil draw or <laughs> a really squalid awful two nil defeat or something. And everybody troops away feeling miserable, but it was it was a real belter of a game and a pro, you know proper atmosphere, loads of noise from both ends, freezing cold, loads of chances, goal mouth action. It was I thought it was great. It was a really it was a it was a good it was a good, good game, game actually. It was a good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an, a very enjoyable afternoon because of the level of the away support and the therefore a big crowd anyway and yeah it was yeah it was uh, from a neutral's point of view and i mean like chris and the team weren't happy about it but but it was a point it was a really good game it was a fantastic occasion and it was one of those i think it was one of those days where um the club and the whole thing transcended the result if you like and i think mm. good things will come out of it i think it's mm. one of those days where you felt like good things will come out of it it felt like a Tom yeah, Charles no, just the result. Felt like a Tom Charles Sorry? testimonial, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've got well, two yeah. two cracking goals. Two two goals. I mean, yeah. They were, you know, yeah. for somebody who's been out for so long to take it as take those goals, yeah. especially the first one, he took it so cool. Hasn't lost his touch, has he? Nah. And he got man of the match, but my yeah. man of the match was Adam Lovett. I thought he played an absolute blinder in midfield. Um, which I think made was made better because Jack Dixon's back took a bit of pressure off him a bit. Yeah, it, it just seemed to be gelled straight away, and I thought this is good. Even in the defence, you had Sam Gale look really composed on the ball because the midfield looked calmer. And I don't know. I mean, Jack Bates going, bringing in Dicko, it all seemed to gel, didn't it? Um, it did. It did look. Good. Adams played very well for for a while now, and um, and you know they don't. They don't care really who who sort of um, Hastings widgets today's sponsor picks. That the play, I don't think the players get too bothered as, as, no, to, no. as to who who they pick. But I, it would have been nice to have seen somebody pick Adam for once. But obviously, it was Tom, it was going to be shooting oh, yeah. for Tom on Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. First yes. game back, two goals. Yeah, two it's goals. Never, never going yeah. any other way, is it? It's fantastic. But yes. It would be That's nice great. to see Adam get recognised, even though even though it's trivial. It would be nice to see him get recognised because he has he's taken on the armband um, and he's 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 I get we got young he's young again he's young mm. he got it's great when you see young blokes yeah. like that who now are becoming yeah. you see them becoming senior players yeah I think I said that about David and um, and, and all it's great when you see younger players yeah. becoming senior becoming seniors and the thing the, the thing lead. about Adam really is good. The thing about Adam is if he's having a good game. Somebody else is going to win man of the match because he's setting everything up. Yeah, he's yeah, the foundation yeah. for everything. Good so, point. So yeah, if good he's having point. a good game, really good he's point. never going to win man of the match. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's because somebody else is going to score two or three goals. Cracking song as well. Yeah. So which we've seen about, it, which is really well, nice. Saying that though, like say with David, David, he's got twenty-one goals now this season. Um, I think I'm twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. I think he'd be counting goals that. as well. Wow. His job that he did against Eastbourne. 
where it's more of a har- harrying defence midfield kind of. Yeah. Like it was a selfless job that he did against Eastbourne. Yeah, and I think that was a really mature, did... mature performance. Wasn't yeah. It's it a really and, mature performance. And to a degree, I think David, David, some of David's work helped free up Tom Chalmers um, and that space that he got, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 I did say just quickly, I've got to shout out Matt Allen, who is a relative of Tom Chalmers that comes behind the goal. Um, I did ask him who writes Tom's scripts uh, when uh, Tom did score uh, and he threw his beer over me. So uh, that's just... Uh... <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I've got a, a question. A the, attend- the attendance was, what, 2,100 and something? 2,107. If if Billy was still chairman, we've had this what, conversation. What's the yes, got it. Uh, uh, three and a half thousand. Oh, really? Okay. No, you're not going well, what do you think, Ian? Oh, 17, something 17, like 17,000, <laughs> something like that. 17,500. Yes, we, I agree. Uh, Andy, Andy can't say as much now. He's more ensconced, you see. So. We did, we did, we did, when, when Billy, what, when Billy was doing the figures, we did have some laughs about it. When he stick, stick his head in the door and give me the attendance. And, um, <laughs> we had a few laughs about that. Yeah. So I know what you're saying, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> um, right then. Um, I think what we got, we got uh, who we got, we got Cole Shorten. Cole Shorten Saturday. Cole Shorten Saturday. Yeah. Can't be there. I know that you're going, Lee. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. So Cole Shorten's not going to be an easy game. They, um, sorry, I'm not prepped. I can't remember where they are in the league. I knew this. I did check this before we started. I thought they're they're like mid table. Is that what Connie was asking for? She close. was trying to find Cole Shorten. Do you know what? And they if I'd ninth. only looked before, if I'd only looked before, they're, Ian, they're ninth. They're actually second in the um, form league, though. You know, the, the last six, so they're second yeah. in that. Lewis are top of that. Yeah. So we got some tough games coming up. We've got hashtag yeah. Margate. <laughs> I must remember my earplugs. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you some, darling. I've got Thank earmuffs you. you can use because it's going to be cold, isn't it? So... Yeah, it will be. We've got Horsham, Lewis, oh, Horsham, yeah, Lewis, no, yeah. home coming up. They're like six they, points, aren't they? I mean, they've, yeah, they've won, they've won three of the last five, haven't they? So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't think there's any easy games, really. So, well, talk, talking a hashtag, so that's this not this Saturday, next Saturday, yeah. Yeah, that one. yeah. yeah. That's the ret- that's going to be the return of the the commentary. So myself, oh, it? yeah, me, me, Tom Dyson, Laurie, and yeah, and myself will be doing uh, the radio again. Um, cool. So obviously this is the first week, so it is going to go arse over tits. Please, uh, no completely abusive messages, just. Mild abuse. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing that. And we're probably going to be doing that for the Margate game as well, actually, for people that can't make the Margate game. So the first oh, yeah, one you're doing is hashtag, is it? The first one <laughs> you're doing is hashtag. First, first one you're doing is yeah, hashtag. Yeah, first one doing, I'm, I'm only doing a couple. I'm not, it's not my, I, you know me, I like to be amongst it. So I, I won't be doing it for away yeah. games. And um, obviously, Terry, when you come along, yeah, this sounds wrong now, but <laughs> take it in, in the way I'm trying to say, but come in the box and... <laughs> <laughs> Come and say a few words. Now you know what I meant. All right, yeah, I will. I will. But, um, listen, Thanks. go on. Sorry, sorry, Terry. Go on. I was just going to say I was looking at the uh, the fixtures I've got coming up. You must you must have sort of like anticipated this because we've got you on the thirtieth, mm. and then for the whole of February we've only got Chatham as the the only other team. We've got Dulwich, Canvey, and Haringey. <laughs> wow, <laughs> bingo. Yeah, so it's like you know. Just to let you guys know, I have got spare earmuffs, so I will I'll bring them if you want to come and stand anywhere yeah. near me. All right. You probably need that with us. We, we have um, yeah, we have recently we bought we we've um installed an electric fan heater in the PA box now. Oh, yeah, so we are. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite toasty up there, isn't it? <laughs> it is very nice and becoming increasingly popular. It's yes. becoming a bit of a social <laughs> hub. Yeah, you can go now, John. <laughs> Yeah, well, it takes the edge off the fan heater. Does oh well, yeah, but in my in my box there's a kettle and um there's you a heater that probably don't work. I well I don't know. It's I just saw it in there because I've only been I'm I don't go in the main stand. I'm not I'm the hoi polloi. I don't go in there. It's not allowed. I'm not allowed normally. Riff-rack. But I had to just to to check some te- technical stuff. I was so it's your there. box now, is it, Chris? No, <laughs> it's Tom's. It's Tom's. <laughs> I am. Be- I think, a mere I think it's. Um, I think. I think it's cuckooing. I think it is verging on cuckooing. I was gesturing at uh, uh, Andy at points. He wasn't looking though. You know, just because like, um, I'm you know, concentrating, like... Chris. 
Yes. It's so. interesting. I don't know how many. I don't know. I don't know what you'll find with this, Chris. I don't know why I'm pointing at you as if you're sat there. Um, I don't know how you'll find this, Chris and Lee, mm. with your vlog and any of the other um others who do match day duties and that. Ever since I've been doing that sort of thing, it really does change your perspective. It changes your perspective on the on the day. I can't tell you how much I enjoy going to an away game and having bugger all to do. <laughs> it's really, it really does. Change. I don't know how you'll find it, Chris. Changing just changing your perspective of the home game, given how much you like being behind the goal and that. I don't know. Well, I've, others... I've brought a, uh, a selection of quail's eggs that we're going to eat in the PA box. So um, that's oh, a joke. <laughs> well, <laughs> Corn sandwiches. Yeah, well, so I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, foie gras. Uh, some foie Sushi. Gras. Sushi. <laughs> so a few years a few years ago, someone but but to do with people thinking that we're we're really middle class. Someone started trying to do coming along with a charcuterie board, right? And it very really? quickly, that, that, that just like it lasted for one game, and it's like that. Like, like, it's sort of funny, but it's just totally. <laughs> no, no one needs when, it. When I, I was, um, uh, I used to run a Watford fanzine, and. Um, we had this thing when we were in the Premier League, we were getting relegated spectacularly. And uh and we in the sort of drunken pub conversation, we we were thinking, what's the what sort of objects could you get into a football ground? And so every week we uh we basically nominated an item of fruit or veg that you would to, insert to, to get into a football ground. And obviously some of them are, you know, Brussels sprouts quite easy. We ended with pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, you just had to get a photograph of yourself with with the fruit fruit or veg. It was pictured. Well, it was on Match of the Day, actually. Was it? <laughs> yeah, good tangent actually, because I once um, I once my brother lived in Norwich, and I was in Norwich one weekend with a friend who was a Leicester fan, and they were playing Norwich. Norwich were playing Leicester in a pre-season friendly. We were going night fishing after the game, so we took a, we had to pick up some maggots and bait and a rod <laughs> oh, brilliant. at a shop in Norwich city centre and took them to the ground and I had to hand a, a box of maggots and two fishing rods to a bewildered steward and say what do we do with these <laughs> and so so that was the oddest thing I've ever taken to a football ground Excellent. was a, was a box a pint of maggots and two fishing rods wow oh. That's very good. That's yeah. like a fantastic way of distracting the uh, goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they don't like my drum in some places. <laughs> yeah. I feel it. So, yeah. Right, again. Yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Thank you very much. On that note. On that note, um, Paul, Terry, John, John from Canvey, Lee, Andy, Ian, Ian the Reader. Ian, the book. We're going to have to talk about your. Uh, you're going to have to do uh, book of the week soon. You will. And nobody wants to hear that. According to according to you, sir. Right. <laughs> according and, to everyone. Yeah. And Ian from Harangay. Uh, lovely to have you on. And well, see you at the game. Take yeah, care, guys. Yeah. Uh, just in, Thanks, just, guys. Inter just interject. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. No problem, Andy. Quickly, all of those of you who haven't visited us yet, do come up and see us. If you come to if you come to the game at Hastings, do come up and say hello. Yeah, and the PA box <laughs> up in the main stand, up in the main stand, you'll there's various levels of security you got through, got to go through Histed security <laughs> firm. Um, Chris has Chris has got a kettle, Andy. So what? So what do we get if we come and visit you? Yeah, you get a cup of tea at me. Bon or me. You get to meet. <laughs> you get to meet Laura, his wife. Yeah, and he the massive woolly hat that he wears. Anyway, yeah. On that sidebar Good vibes. <laughs> yes, take care. Later, take care, guys. guys. Thanks Bye. a lot. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.